Product pricing is a masterful psychological manipulation technique that we are exposed to on a daily basis. From simply picking up a gallon of milk for $1.99 to pre-ordering an iPhone for $9.99. We try to make buying decisions based on value, use, and longevity. But despite our best efforts, these pricing games subconsciously affect all of our buying decisions. Considering this, how exactly are products priced? Starting off, we have the most blatant pricing technique, charm pricing. Charm pricing is when the price ends in 99 or 95. Charm pricing is less about the ending number and more about reducing the leading number by one. This is especially effective for prices that are just under a new place value like 10, 100, or $1,000. Our brains use the first number as an anchor and use this to perceive the cost of the certain product. When we see the price 199, the anchor value is 1 rather than 2 despite the actual cost being nearly $2. By reducing the perceived cost, companies are able to make their products seem like a greater value, thus increasing the likelihood of a conversion. Next up, we have exclusive pricing. Logically, we want the best value for the cheapest price, but in practice, we often prefer getting exclusive product for a higher price. The best example of this is Apple. They don't offer the best specs or the latest technology. In fact, they often lag behind the market whether it's OLED implementation or DDR4 RAM. But this doesn't stop Apple from selling millions of iPhones and MacBooks. The thing is, Apple isn't selling phones or laptops, they're selling a lifestyle and a social image. People are well aware of how expensive Apple products are and owning an Apple product will display that you are financially stable and even wealthy. And this perceived image is what sells Apple products as well as all luxury brands. Are Rolls Royces really four times as luxurious as Mercedes S-Classes? Are organic foods really twice as healthy as normal food? And as for designer brands, this really needs an explanation. Overall, with premium pricing, companies try to get consumers to buy their products based on exclusivity rather than value. Moving on, let's take a look at a few visual tactics. Writing prices in a small font is a popular technique used by many companies. Our brains perceive cost of a product not just by its numerical value, but also its physical size. Conversely, discounted products often have large physical price tags as this is perceived as a larger discount. Speaking of larger prices, you may have noticed that large prices generally don't have commas. This is designed to influence the way we group the numbers in a price. If there was a comma, we are more likely to read this number as 2,399. But without a comma, we are swayed to read it as 2,399. By associating smaller numbers with larger prices, companies make their products appear cheaper than they really are. Similar to this, companies also associate words that mean small with high-priced products. For instance, if you were trying to sell a $1,500 phone, Instead of advertising it as high performance and high capacity, which are characteristics consumers would already expect, it is much more effective to say thin, versatile, and low power consumption. Another pricing technique used is breaking up the total price of a product into smaller quantities. This is especially popular with monthly plans, whether subscriptions or installment payments. For example, a gym that charges $90 a month may advertise their subscription cost as just $3 a day. This doesn't sound nearly as bad and makes it seem like the per visit cost is only $3. But the thing is, it is unlikely that you go every single day. The average person would be lucky if they went just 10 times a month, so the per visit cost is actually 3 times more at $9. Similarly, most gyms don't even offer an yearly subscription because you are less likely to renew given a higher upfront cost. Following up, for large prices, it is very effective to offer specific pricing rather than round numbers. For example, it's better to price a car at $29,654.37 rather than just simply $28,999.99. Though we are offering a higher MSRP, the higher price is more likely to lead to a sale. This is because people associate specific numbers with honesty. They think, since you went through the trouble to come up with such a specific price, you're not trying to rip them off, and so they're less likely to negotiate. 
the round $28,999.99 is perceived as having a much larger markup despite actually being cheaper. However, in cases where a purchase is emotional, it can actually be helpful to choose round numbers. This is often the case in jewelry. In such cases, the buyer has already decided to buy the product whether a wedding ring or a wedding dress. Here, people's budgets are much more flexible and they choose to buy a product based on how much they like the product rather than the price. As a result, you want the price to seem higher as this is one of the few cases that people are actually proud to pay more as people are proud of these purchases. As you can see, the psychology of pricing is a very complex subject as the rules and strategies vastly differ based on the price, emotions, and the product itself. Sometimes you want round numbers, sometimes you want specific numbers, and other times you want charming numbers. Similarly, sometimes you're selling value while other times you're selling exclusivity or emotions. But these are some of the most commonly used pricing strategies across all price ranges and all companies use a combination of them. So next time you're shopping, take a closer look at the price because I assure you, there is more going on than what meets the eye. If you guys thought this video gave a good overview of the psychology of pricing, then make sure to drop a like and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari and I'll see you guys on the next one.